The jury in the Glenn Maxwell trial heard the first full day of testimony today, and it was graphic and it was disturbing. Maxwell is charged with recruiting and transporting girls for Jeffrey Epstein to sexually abuse between 1994 and 2004. The first of four of Epstein's victims expected to testify took the stand today. The witness using the pseudonym Jane went into detail about the abuse that she allegedly suffered at the hands of the defendant and Jeffrey Epstein starting when she was just 14. At first, she talked about the grooming process, saying, quote, they made me feel special by spending time with me, talking to me, asking me what I was doing in school. They took me to the movies, took me shopping, took me on field trips. It changed when the abuse started happening. She then described the abuse itself. Quote, what would Maxwell typically do? She, along with others, would just start taking their clothes off. Jeffrey would get on the massage table. It just turned into this orgy. Then the prosecutor asked, who was most frequently in the room when you had sexual contact with Jeffrey Epstein when you were 14 years old? Answer, Glenn Maxwell. But the defense fighting back on the cross-examination before they concluded for the day, asking why she hadn't mentioned Maxwell earlier. Quote, in those 20 years, you never mentioned Glenn Maxwell sexually abused you. I don't know. You don't know? I was very reluctant to give horrible details. You talked to them about Epstein? Yes. Did you talk about Glenn Maxwell? I don't know. Maxwell's pled not guilty. Her lawyer's arguing that she's effectively being made a scapegoat for Jeffrey Epstein. Join us now is Adam Klasfeld, the managing editor for Law and Crime. He's been inside the courtroom covering the case. Uh, Adam, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. All right, so this is powerful stuff, as the uh, this witness absolutely, testified. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's testimony that was promised from the very beginning of the case. You had the prosecutor saying, just as trial began, I'm going to tell you the story of a girl named Jane. And today, Jane testified on day two of the trial. And she told a powerful and emotional story of her abuse. You read some of the quotes right now. And it got even more detailed and more graphic. We've been hearing about some of what Epstein's victims had said in the past and, and what Glenn Maxwell's accusers had been saying in the past. And there were some commonalities of stories of massages that escalated into sexual assault. And here, there were, in accordance with a lot of the other testimony that we've been hearing in the past in civil cases and things like that, uh, accusations of the use of sex toys. Now, this witness said it went into those details and it got graphic. She, her voice cracked on numerous occasions when she was recounting her allegations of abuse. And at a number of points that it's been reported from the pool reports that uh, Maxwell watching this took uh, deep breaths or breaths got deeper when uh, she started testifying as to her first encounters. So it was powerful testimony, because, right? Because the theory here is that Maxwell is, is grooming her, right? Is sort of, she's trusting Maxwell. Right, and it's twofold. It's grooming, and it's also allegations of hands-on assault. She accused her from the witness stand of fondling her. Uh, that there were, you read one of the quotes about uh, how things escalated into an orgy. Uh, she placed Maxwell on the scene of that, and that's what prosecutors had promised from the earliest stages of the case. That this is partly a story about grooming, and partly a allegations of direct abuse. Because it is critical for prosecutors to not just implicate Jeffrey Epstein, right? Because that's exactly what the defense wants. The defense Absolutely. wants them to just talk about Epstein, talk about Epstein. For the prosecutors, they've got to show this isn't just about Epstein. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, the entire, we, yesterday was the opening statements, and the opening statement from the defense attorney was, she's a stand-in for Epstein. She's a lightning rod. That was the theme that the defense attorney kept hammering. And her, her line, the opening line for 
the prosecution, as I said, was, I'll tell you a story about Jane. The opening line for the defense was, ever since Eve was said to have tempted Adam with the apple, uh, women have been blamed for the misdeeds of men. So she's trying to shift the blame to Jeffrey Epstein, depict her client as a... And the cross-examination, the first line of questioning was effective, right? In the sense that you hadn't mentioned Glenn Maxwell in the 20 years since it's happened. And that pivots to the key theme of the defense and something that's going to go ahead as trial proceeds, which is the defense is going to try to undermine memory. And there was a back and forth on that. Yeah. Now, this remember, the allegations of this indictment are between 1995 and 2004. So they're going to try to undermine the accuser's memories. They're going to try to paint the accusers as financially motivated. Right, so it's both, it's both wrong and lying. It's an interesting um, split that they're, that they're arguing both things. All right. Adam Klasfeld, thank you very much for joining us. I'm sorry we made you sit there with that thing on your ear. <laughs> that thing coming out of sorry. your ear. It wasn't your fault. It was our fault. Come on. <laughs> sorry that we made you do that. Adam, good to see you. Great to see you, too. Coming thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.